Hello everyone, my name is Gabby and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super Review. This time reviewing episode 120. Universe 3 go on an all-out offensive against Universe 7. While Gohan manages to take most of them on, things become difficult when three of their fighters merge into one, giant mech style. But it's defeated with the combined efforts of Goku, Vegeta and Gohan. However, it seems Universe 3 have one more trick up their sleeves. So, what did I like about this episode? Well, first of all, this was the episode where Universe 3 really kind of came into action and really kind of showed us what they could do. And I do have to say, I do kind of appreciate their sort of gimmick. At first, I thought they were just like giant mech themed, kind of sort of to fit in the idea that like every universe in this tournament of power is kind of sort of like a different genre of anime in a way. But I think it's just more like they're kind of like science fiction technology themed. I mean, Universe 3 also had that common writer looking guy and also that guy who kind of seemed like he was made out of some kind of goo like he was some kind of like you know failed science experiment or something like that but i think my favorite thing about universe 3 and their gimmick is how it kind of ties in to the gods of universe 3 because it's sort of like the gods are all also sort of related to that gimmick in a very clear obvious way so you've got like the kaioshin who has glasses and is going on about plans all the time you have the hakai shin who literally does look like a robot and can only communicate through beeping noises and then the angel is basically just trying to translate what the god of destruction says. Not every universe really had that to the same degree. Like there's no reason as to why an elephant guy would be in the universe that had a whole bunch of like random martial arts dudes. There's no reason as to why like an Egyptian looking lady was in a universe that was obsessed with love. Like the connection isn't as clear as it is with universe 3. Also this was kind of essentially another sort of Gohan episode but I think the unique thing about this episode is that the stuff that Gohan was doing was actually kind of like important and part of the main plot to the point that like everyone was sort of reacting to it and sort of like acknowledging it all. And I do have to say that it's really enjoyable to see everybody's reactions. What makes Gohan different to some of the other members of Universe 7 is it feels like when Gohan does something cool like the reaction of everybody in Universe 7 is this kind of like just like low-key pride. Like they're all kind of like proud of like how far Gohan has come and how well he's actually doing doing in this tournament. It's like, even if he's an adult now and has a kid of his own, it still kind of feels like everyone's still sort of treating Gohan like he is kind of like the baby of the family. And he's just like, oh, he's sort of like grown up now and it's really cool to see and they've kind of got that sort of reaction. Like, I really don't think anybody reacts like this to any other member of Universe 7. Probably because none of the other members of Universe 7 had something particular to prove. Plus, this episode kind of had a bit of a milestone in of itself and that was that Goku and Gohan Han in this episode were actually fighting an opponent together, sort of helping each other to fight an opponent. I mean, Vegeta as well, but I think the Goku and Gohan thing is actually a really kind of fun piece of trivia because if you really think about it, the last time Goku and Gohan have actually fought against one opponent actually together when both of them were actually fighting at the same time, I'd say that hasn't really happened since the Vegeta fight. Like, like, like just think about it. Just think about it. I think it's the first time since then, like, properly, and that's kind of ridiculous but also really fun. As for what I didn't like about this episode, well, Gohan helping defeat the Universe 3 merged robot thing was pretty cool in and of itself. I feel like the episode was trying to act like that was some kind of like really big major accomplishment that was like really worth praise, and I just kind of didn't really buy it. I didn't really feel like it was honestly such a big and important moment for his character, probably because of a few reasons. First of all, I don't think we really saw enough of the actual like big merged robot fighting himself for us to actually kind of understand how strong he is and if he's really strong and that like he's a very big threat that needs to be taken out ASAP. Second of all, the fact that Goku and Vegeta kind of show up to sort of like buy time for Gohan to charge his attack, the way they sort of phrase it almost makes it seem like it was Goku and Vegeta who were the ones who kind of came up with the big plan in the first place and really they should be the ones who should also be taking credit for these guys being defeated. And third of all, there wasn't like there was any kind of like specific sort of character moments for Gohan. Like there wasn't some moment during that fight where I was just like, I just suddenly stopped and I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's Gohan. Only Gohan could specifically like act like that 
or fight like that or do that. If you combine all that together, it makes it kind of feel like Gohan didn't defeat Universe 3 because he was a really great fighter, but rather Gohan defeated Universe 3 because he was basically just there at the right place at the right time, and that was the only reason why he won. So for a moment like that, being a specific moment where like all of the characters start singling Gohan out for praise, and you even have Beerus calling him by his name for the first time, it just doesn't really feel like it's a moment that's big enough or important enough to really justify that kind of reaction. Basically this episode felt like it was trying to imply one thing, that was Gohan's defeat of Universe 3 was this really big deal that everybody should like be talking about, and I just didn't really feel like it did enough to kind of actually deserve that. Also, while I do appreciate Universe 3's gimmick, I'm honestly kind of surprised that they left them till the very end, like they're the last universe to get eliminated before they fight Universe 11 because in all honesty, they're also probably the least interesting out of all of the universes. Like, say what you want about Universe 4, at least they actually had some kind of personality and some kind of like unique abilities and stuff. In Universe 4, three of the members are literally interchangeable to the point that they can turn into one and not really have much of a difference, and most of them being kind of like robot themed means they don't really talk much either, so they can't really show their personality like that as well. I am honestly kind of surprised that these guys managed to outlast Universe 2 and Universe 6 because like, even if it might make sense by some kind of like strategy or power scaling logic or whatever, they're just not as entertaining to watch, so I'm kind of surprised that they're here. Now. Just before the end. So as for next episode, well Universe 3 is going to reveal their final, final trump card, some kind of big giant warrior who it seems like all of Universe 7 are going to have to fight. As in like even Frieza looks like he's going to have to join to the fight. I've been saying that I've been enjoying Universe 7 team battles this entire tournament, but it seems like next episode is specifically going to be that one thing that really kind of qualifies as a Universe 7 team battle because everyone is together and everyone is fighting one opponent specifically. So that could be quite entertaining. So that was Dragon Ball Super episode 120. It may have looked better than last week, but I'd argue it had just as little of substance to it. Some of the characters in Universe 7 had to fight some of the characters in Universe 3 and I just really feel like there wasn't much there to talk about. Even the character moments, if there were character moments, were so kind of short and so like irrelevant in the grand scheme of things, just didn't really feel like there was much that was quite memorable at all. I never would have thought that I'd find a Gohan episode actually kind of boring, but that's kind of what happened. I guess it just shows it's not necessarily what characters are in there which makes an episode good, it's what you do with those characters that makes it important. And I just really didn't think they did much with these characters. But next week is them facing the very last opponent that they have to face before Universe 11. Unfortunately, we don't really have many spoilers over how exactly the fight with Universe 11 is going to unfold, or even how long the fight with Universe 11 is going to unfold, and that's the part that's honestly quite legitimately interesting, and that's the part that I'm probably a bit more excited about than just like Universe 3. That's not to say that next week isn't going to be good, it might honestly be quite interesting. Entertaining. It's just that when we're so close to the end right now, it is just kind of like agonizing. We're just sort of waiting and it's just like, I know the other stuff is coming. I know there is more stuff coming and we have to deal with some stuff which, while they might be entertaining, it's just not that stuff that we're all looking forward to. But you know, hopefully next week will be good and then after that, we'll see what happens. So this is Gabby signing out and I'll see you all next week. Bye guys!